Hi, Donna Steitler here. I'm the International Living Correspondent for Cuenca, Ecuador, and I am so excited that we're talking about traditions and cultures. There's really three cultures. There's the indigenous tribes, which is the Incas. There's the Spanish colonial, which came when the um, Spanish came over and conquered Ecuador for a while. And then there is the French, who came here on exploratory trips. Um, a lot of the uh, peop the indig indigenous we'll talk about first are easy, easy to spot because they're, they're typically very short and they wear these uh, traditional outfits. So the men will wear these stovetop hats and uh, white shirts and uh, pants that just go down to like their calves. And the women dress in these white blouses that are very embroidered, very nice, and these velvet skirts, and the velvet skirts are gathered, and they're all kinds of bright colors. They're green or red or yellow with embroidery at the bottom, and the more that you're an upper-class indigenous person, the more elaborate your embroidery is. And so when you're walking around downtown, because every town really has indigenous people, they live in concert with the other cultures, in Ecuador because uh, the um, Incas and the indigenous tribes weren't put on reservations so they never lost their land so they live either in the city or right out the city and then they come in and they bring all their uh, artists and work to sell in the markets in the bigger cities. Uh, some of the things that I think are really cool that the indigenous people make, well first of all I got some samples. I love the black pottery. I don't know if you can see this. See it's a little Pig. It's a little pig, a little tail. Um, this black pottery, they make all kinds of pots and, and all kinds of dishes. And you can, well, it's so, so cool because you can put them in your oven and use them. Or you can use them on your burner, on your stove, your flame. Uh, or you can just use them, like I use them, I value these for all my friends. And I use them for dinner plates so they won't pick out. Um, they also have... Uh, a huge tradition of uh, mask making yeah. um, and this one's of the sun you'll see a lot of them out of the sun because the Incas worship the sun and so it's a good luck charm for them to have and um, they also have a lot of alpaca because alpacas are big here you can get in the big mercados all these things and our pack of scarves and sweaters and blankets, just all kinds of goods. The um, other thing that the Incas had was a lot of traditions that are still maintained these days. They have uh, what you call, in I'm going to say this wrong, Intipama. Okay, it's the festival of the sun. And each year they do it right before the harvest and they bring all these seeds from all the kinds of vegetables and fruits and all the kinds of things they want to grow and succeed during harvest. And they, they make these big circles and then they do all kinds of dances and play flute music in honor of the God of Sun uh, to help with the harvest. And then you have things like shamans at these places and I went to one of the shamans that thought was very cool. They do all this stuff. They, you know, put smoke to take away the evil spirits and even, like, they, they drink this kind of alcohol kind of drink and then they light a fire and when they spit on you, it, it flames up. So, uh, for the men, you won't have to shave for a while, but it's not scary. It sounds a little scary, but it's actually quite interesting and then they have you drink this solution that will help ward off spirits and give you good luck. Um, then, now, okay, that's the Incas, the Spanish, now the Spanish, when they came in, they, um, they bought Catholicism, and so 80% of Ecuador has a, or they're Catholics, and so there's huge influences, and so that's why you have all these, uh, really beautiful, huge, uh, cathedrals all throughout Ecuador, especially Quito and Guayaquil and the um, Cuenca where I live, but every every town will have definitely have a church of some sort. Um, the other thing that uh, the they did is in Cuenca is 
they built a whole lot of the Spanish colonial homes when they came. And it was sort of interesting when you walk through because you'll have these mortar bricks that are perfectly stacked. And they, they I mean, they don't, didn't have to use mortar because the bricks just stand perfectly. And now hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years later, they're still standing. And so the Spanish actually came over and built their cathedrals and everything on top of that. So you'll see a real mix of the beginning history here and the culture of the Incas, and then you'll see when the Spanish came in what, what they brought to the table too. So next I want to talk a little bit about architecture because that's been a huge, beautiful thing that uh, Ecuador is noted for and a lot of tourists come to see. So let's talk a little bit about the architecture. Uh, Un Cuenca is a UNESCO heritage site known for its 15th century architecture and its 17th century French Republican architecture. There are 235 historical structures alone in the El Centro downtown area. Now, when the Spanish came over for their invasion in the 1500s, one of the things they did again is build these elaborate houses and they're not, you don't really know that they're as lavish as they are because the Spanish did not believe in flaunting your wealth on the outside of your buildings uh, or your homes. And so you'll have these really nice wooden doors. They just look sort of unassuming. And then when you walk through them, all of a sudden here's all these huge interior homes. And they all have these rooms built around huge courtyards. And in the courtyards, there's fruit trees and lavish gardens and outside settings uh, to, to eat indoor or outdoor. And a lot of you would recognize because the dark wood, you know, a lot of the dark wood and the wood beams on the outside. And what always amazes me is that you just think that you're walking into this little room because of the unassuming doors. And here you have all these beautiful, astoundingly beautiful homes and decorated with really, really beautiful carved wood. And so anyway, those homes, uh, the Spanish uh, colonial homes that won the UNESCO heritage site. Uh, then here comes the French in the 1700s. And I think this is very interesting because the way that the French got to Cuenca is they were in Quito on what was called the French Geodesmic Mission. And the purpose of the mission was to really find the equator and locate it and measure its width. And the French got a little bit uh, tired of Quito and they heard about this city called Cuenca that w the Inca gods considered it the jewel of Ecuador and they went there to vacation. So here comes all these really flamboyant French people and they put con and said, oh my God, these are the most elaborate culture of the world and they wanted to be like them and so they started adopting the French culture as part of uh, how they dressed. They would send their kids to French uh, schools. They started uh, painting French murals on the inside of their buildings and decorating them with imported French tin and the outside they decided to do facades of French buildings. So they actually plastered over the Spanish colonial uh, f and uh, had facades of French. It, it looks to me like just a little New Orleans. They have all these iron balconies boasting all these huge flower boxes and it really made the town very French inspired and they built French inspired gardens and parks and so the town center sort of went from a Spanish colonial until you walked inside and the outside was French and that's why you see so many different types of styles of architecture in Cuenca well and, and some of the other uh, cities like Quito and Guayaquil as well so that's a little bit about how the French and the Spanish influenced uh, the architecture of this country. 
Okay, let's talk a little bit about some of the other cultural influences here. There's a couple of big ones. One of the largest is the music and art is everywhere in Cuenca. There are so many different forms of artesian work here, you know, from hand, back, back loomed rugs to, you know, like I said, masks and all kinds of stuff. But there's amazing street art and street performers as well. In Cuenca, there's an active government program that uh, is a collective of street artists in the city. And so a lot of the guys that were tagging or doing graffiti on buildings, they said, let's put your art used to better um, use. And so they have a lot of different streets in Cuenca, and some of the cities on the coast do this as well. And they commission these people who are um, not paid and tagging and at night, and they said, we're going to pay you to reconstruct beautiful artwork on the streets. So you'll walk down, and there might be three-story murals of Picasso-like uh, paintings of women. Or One of my favorites is there's a staircase that goes up three stories, so it has three tiers, and there's a mosaic artwork of the indigenous, like fishing and bringing their things to market, that run up the side of this staircase, which is also where it lands to where the indigenous, who are only allowed to come into the city through one entrance, it's the entrance to where they would they bring their goods uh, to the market. Uh, the other thing I sort of found really cool is the street performers. Yeah, they you just have them all over the place, almost every st street corner. I mean, I've seen uh, Inca tribes doing their traditional flute music and dancing on the street corners. There's some more modern things like people who do frozen, you know, the robots, and then you give them a tip and they'll move. One of my two favorites was I was walking down the street and all of a sudden Spider-Man dropped down from a tree and landed right above where the cars were and that it was almost like a circus soleil act. He just rolled down. And so you see really unusual things. And the other one was there's a saxophone player, a young Ecuadorian saxophone player, who was playing in the mood and it's stopping traffic. It was just amazing. Um, also, music is so valued here. Music, everyone is playing. There's guitars playing on the street corners. And the thing that's sort of neat about that is the, the push for culture in Ecuador is so profound that everything's free. Everything's free. The symphonies are free. The, ba the uh, ballets, if you like opera, you can go to that. There's theater performances, and the goal was for the government to inspire the youth and people living in the city to appreciate musical culture. Um, there's also, um, I think, just the fact that you can walk down the street and catch all kinds of different cultures through the street performance is very interesting to me. So you, you, a lot of people just go downtown, grab a, an ice cream from Tutu Fredo, which is delightful and sit in the park and and you can see break dancers in the gazebo all kinds of stuff so music is huge here uh, the other thing that's really big is I know you hear hear this from other South American countries fiestas are big here it's like a, I joke to my friends it's like the Prince song if you uh, haven't come to party don't bother knocking on the door. I mean, there is a party every night for every occasion. And the uh, one of my favorites is November 3rd uh, is the independence from Sp Sp the Spanish. And it's a big fiesta. And what they do is downtown they have blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks, just miles of candy booths, all kinds of candy, all kinds of chocolate. You can get a chocolate, you can get a sure high just walking down the street. But you also have to watch it because there is so much candies. There's bees. There is bees. So you always go downtown to, and celebrate, bat, grab a bag of candy and just have a good time eating sugar. Uh, another one of the fiestas that I really like is in November they're celebrating the independence of Ecuador. And so they have all kinds of parades going on and, and parties and they have one of the, the probably the largest uh, artesian 
uh, fiesta and they just set up booths all up and down the rivers and seeing there's four rivers here there's a lot of booths and they have the, the most exquisite crafts that you'd ever see all kinds of wood carvings and and hats and, that they make like the Panama hats and the mask and leather leather goods are really huge here nice purses and briefcases just anything you'd want to buy and a lot of buyers come from all around the world to to buy uh, the collection of uh, of crafts for their stores across the world um, I also really enjoy some of the religious uh, fiestas and holidays one of my favorites is the All Saints it's it's it is not Halloween like it is in the States it's a religious holiday and what you do is you make a plate full of food for one of your deceased relatives and then you take it to the cemetery and you have uh, lunch with your deceased relatives and it's that way of continuing the next culture and not forgetting your relatives but it's also not sad it's very upbeat there's bands there and weddings sometimes on All Saints Day so the cemeteries are filled with all kinds of of activities so it's a very very good tribute to uh, your ancestors I also well you gotta love the Christmas here God it's mandatory and one of my favorite scenes is the Pasilla de Nino and it's the parade that has all the children um, they dress up and they participate in a parade it's only eight hours what else are you gonna do and then the parade goes through town and they're, the little girls dress up as little angels and all white and they sit on these elaborately decorated horses with flowers and everything on it and they're escorted by their little brothers or, and the, the boys were very traditional um, not costumes, uh, traditional outfits and they, 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 they draw little handlebar mustaches on them it's so cute like seeing a little three year old with a handlebar mustache and big sombreros and because eight hours isn't enough not enough for a parade uh, they continue the parade every Sunday until February until like middle of February because they want every child to be able to have a time to be a special uh, participant in this parade uh, I happen to live on a road they go by so I get lots I have four parades in one day sometimes on a Sunday uh, the other thing is New Year's when you're here you oh, you might as well enjoy New Year's you know don't leave too soon because that is the most amazing time in all the main cities in Ecuador and Cuenca what you do is you oh I forgot my little effigy you, you buy these little effigies that are like paper mache and a little uh, dress and a, a little suit and you buy these masks, these paper mache masks, and you put it on there. And what you do is you tuck within the effigy uh, the things that you want bad, maybe things that you want to, to get rid of the evil or the pain. And you then you write also things that you hope to happen for the new year. And then at midnight, the entire town shows out, and on all the street corners, they're lighting these in big bonfires. And if that's not enough excitement for you, at midnight, they also shoot off the most amazing fireworks displays all over town. So you just see the entire town. These towns just light up and just the most beautiful light show. Um, this, I could go on and on all day on and on about how cultural and interesting Ecuador is uh, so what I would like to do is say don't take my word for it come down and visit and visit uh, we would love to have you and so buenas suertes and ciao which means good luck and goodbye so until next time signing off Donna Steidler